Hi, it's Russ from Studio One Expert, and I want to tell you everything you need to know about Studio One 4.1. 4.1 is the first update since the release of Studio One version 4, and for those that own Studio One version 4, it's a free update. So you can head to your pre sonas accounts, or you can click the update button within Studio One, and it should download straight away without any cost to you. And so let me start going from top to bottom. The first thing that it offers now is support for the recently announced Atom production and performance pad controller. That's the lovely little 16 pad and four knob controller that can be used uh, with tight integration to Studio One and to Impact. So we don't have one yet. Uh, there's none in the wild. So uh, when they are, we'll give you a full review of that. But in the meantime, it gives you full integration with the Atom production controller, which is really good. The second great new feature for those who are working in Pro Studios particularly is that Pipeline has seen a, a big update. It has two new versions. It has Pipeline Mono and it has Pipeline Stereo. One of the cool features of Pipeline Mono and Stereo now is you can do a mono send and a stereo return without tying up important connections upon your interface, which is great for things like reverbs and any kind of stereo delay effect and things like that. So that's very useful. But the big headline feature of Pipeline now is that it's automatically delay compensation. So instead of having to do all the pinging and set it yourself, you simply hit the, the auto button and it does it for you. Now once that's set up, then I can and play it back to you now and this is the hugely heavily compressed DBX160. Now the great thing now is that we can go in and we can mix it. We can do parallel compression for example. That's very, very cool. The nice other new feature on this is that a very inspired feature, might I add, from a really cool plugin called Snapshot. Can't remember who created that plugin. But now, if you're using hardware, we can add in a picture as well. So I can come in here and I can just drag in a picture uh, and I add it in. And now I've got the settings for my DBX in Pipeline. So now I can save that and I can go store as uh, preset, uh, guitar, slam, DBX 160 and that's now a, a pipeline setting that I have in there so if I then reopen pipeline I can then know that that's a really cool guitar setting and there's all the stuff in there I can go in I can double click on it and make it bigger and things like that so that's a really great new update to pipeline the auto delay compensation and also the addition of uh, having a, a photo and also putting some notes in as well saying this is great and that's in there as well now. So we've got the notes in there and we've got, as I say, the picture and that. So that's very, very cool. So the next new feature I want to talk about is that note repeat has been greatly improved. Now you can find the note repeat option by going to view and down here you'll see note repeat and then it comes up on the screen here. Now what's very cool about note repeat and I've got it running here on Easy Drummer. So I've got an instance of Easy Drummer and you have two options. You have it working in basically the same note speed working across all the notes. Or you can work it in, in extended mode where you basically have both the keyboard uh, settings, the whole settings and the note sizes that you want to use for each thing. So now it will choose from the last note you hit before you go into there. So if we're in full keyboard mode, where they're all playing the same rate, which of course is changeable there, if we go to single mode instead, and we go back in, choose the hi-hat instead, and then go back into single mode, If you come to the keyboard here, you'll see uh, that we have all the things that we can then turn it on and off. So the C sharp above middle C turns it on and off. So basically, if you get really used to using this, you don't have to use your mouse at all. You can just do it all from the keyboard. So you turn it on and off. So we say at the moment it's active. So.
turn it on. And then single mode, you can see there's C-sharp above there. So back into to hit the hi-hat. Single mode back on. So I'm not using the mouse at all now. One really cool feature is it note quantizes as you're doing the inputs. If we play the track again. So it doesn't matter when you hit the key, uh, it will play on the note. Really useful, especially if you're triggering loops. And of course, this is tightly integrated with things like Atom again. So very good for a turning Studio One to a live loop play well, like we've shown you in other videos. Now that's a very, very cool thing. Now some other good things as well is that the tempo at last has been sorted out. So you can do a number of things in the tempo window here, which are really useful now. So for example, you can take the pencil and a regular pencil and just freehand in a tempo map. Uh, that's very, very useful. You can set a range as well. So if you don't want the range to be too extreme, you can make that very extreme. Or so we could do things like this, be absolutely stupid. Or you can, as I say, make the range much tighter. And we could just make that some slight variations in that whole performance there, just draw those in. If you don't want to use the free hand, you can use a line tool. You can just go like that and say, I want to go there. And then I'll go there, draw a line in there. So very, very useful. Now a really cool feature within this is the beat linear timeline option. Now what we mean by that is if you noticed, as I was drawing in, and I'll do it again, I'll go back into the regular free hand tool. As you draw it in, there, and play it again. In fact, what I'm going to do as well is open this up a bit. You'll see that the bar lines aren't changing, and that's because it's using a thing called beat linear. So we're going to put all this back to normal again from where we started. And in right mouse click here, you have this time base option. If you went to time linear and you drew it in, watch what happens to the bars. They change size. They're bigger and smaller, and we'll go up and down a bit here. See, so we've got a bar that's short here and a bar that's longer. That might be useful for some people, but I actually prefer it the other way, where all my bars are the same length. We get a beat linear. And what then happens instead is the cursor speeds up and slows down. Let's play that and show you. That's a really cool feature, so that you don't have a kind of mind warping when you're doing those tempo changes. Very, very useful. So much better tempo automation and there's improved manual tempo mapping as well in there. You can also now tap tempo via MIDI or via a keyboard shortcut. Now the next big feature I want to talk about is the AEF export. That's been greatly improved and this will make a lot of Pro Tools users and composers very happy. If we go to save as now and we choose the AEF file and we go save, use AF file format. We've got lots more in this window now. You can choose to embed the audio or you can choose to not embed it and that will give you a separate set of audio files as well as the AAF file, which is normal for people like Pro Tools users. Now you have split stereo tracks. Again, for people like Pro Tools users, uh, they would prefer to you bring them in, as, in in single mono files and so you can choose to use the stereo tracks as a single stereo tr track or two mono files. You can convert the audio files to various formats there, various resolutions. You can trim the audio files and discard all the stuff that isn't included. Uh, you can export the pan. And there's a legacy mode to give it more compatibility. So there's far more in there. That's going to make a lot of Studio One and Pro Tools users that use both people like me very happy. It just makes it far more integrated with the Pro Tools workflow. So that's fantastic. They've listened again, which is brilliant. And I know I spoke with some composers and put them in touch with uh, Presonus about things like this, and so they have listened to that feedback and responded to it very well. Uh, you can now import song data from a song template, not just a song. I know that was a feature that a lot of people were wanting as well. Now, another feature which is going to make at least one friend of mine happy, but I know a lot of pro uh, 
users, especially those that use consoles that have a separate room for tracking and have talent in that room. Now, one of the big problems in the past was if you hit the solo buttons, it would affect the cue mixes, which would drive people crazy. Now, you have an option here now, so you can turn that on and off so the cue mix doesn't get muted and doesn't follow the channels when you hit the solo. So that's a greatly improved workflow for those who are getting driven crazy when they were in the control room and they were trying to solo something and it would affect the mix in the headphones. That's now been remedied to quite a long, large degree uh, with that option. There are some caveats around buses, but if you read the information on our website, you'll see uh, how it's affected and how it works. But that's a greatly improved workflow for those who are using uh, talent uh, on cue mixes in other rooms. So very, very useful feature. That's good as well. Two other new features that are really useful for Windows users. There's a system DPI scaling option for those who have third-party plugins and there's a high, enable high DPI mode as well. So very, very useful. So lots of great new features now in Studio One version 4.1. Pipeline XT, stereo and mono. Uh, the new tempo features, the new note repeat features, uh, the AAF export features have been greatly improved. So it's a great update for Studio One users. Hope you've enjoyed this. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again soon.